Hello, I'm Claudia Doram and today I'll be answering your most searched questions on gravity. Why is gravity different on different planets? Okay, good question. So gravity itself is the most universal phenomenon there is. You should think of gravity very much on how masses communicate their influences on each other. So gravity itself is a messenger and planets may have different masses and therefore the message itself may be different, but gravity itself is the same. For instance, Mars is nine times lighter than the Earth and so you would expect the gravitational pull on the surface of Mars to be much weaker than that of the Earth. But it's not nine times smaller because at the same time the radius of Mars is much smaller than the radius of the Earth. So what counts actually is the mass of the planet divided by the radius squared of that planet. Okay, next question. Why is gravity a non-contact force? Okay, so it may depend a little bit on what you think about gravity. For most people, maybe they have the impression that gravity is related to the pain you feel upon impact when you, when you fall and hit the ground but that's got nothing to do with gravity. The two charges don't need to be in contact with one another, they get communicated at a distance and the same thing happens for gravity itself. Why is gravity important? Uh, gravity is the most important phenomenon that exists out there. Already Newton understood that there's much more to gravity than just chocolate or apples falling on the ground, the same phenomenon that explains what happens here at the surface of the Earth is responsible for the motion of planets in the solar system and for the stars in the galaxy and in fact for the whole evolution of our universe. And there's actually something quite universal about gravity in that it affects everything and everyone in the same way. It doesn't matter how light or massive you are, you can be a pumpkin seed, you can be a hammer, you can be a planet, a black hole, or you can be something as light as, as light itself, and you'll still be affected by gravity. There's something very universal there. We call this the equivalence principle. And Einstein realized that this equivalence principle meant that there was much more to gravity than just the interaction between two masses. It had to be much deeper than that. It had to be encoded not only in the masses themselves, but in an underlying structure, in the very structure of space and time. And thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, we now understand, for instance, that the Earth curves the structure of space-time around itself. We're all experiencing this curvature of space-time, and that's how we're experiencing the gravitational attraction. Now, throughout the universe, everything and everyone is connected through the structure of space-time, through this curvature of space-time, and so through gravity. Gravity connects everything and everyone in the universe. It's the most important phenomenon that you can think of. So with that in mind, why is gravity not a force? Well, it's true that if you think of gravity as just being represented by the local curvature at any given point, then you may have the impression that gravity is not a force. But there's much more to gravity than that. Actually, gravity has a force within itself. And the detection of gravitational waves is the proof that gravity at the fundamental level is also a force, like electromagnetism is a force, for instance. And the gravitational waves, they distort the very notion of space and time in our instruments. They squeeze them along some direction and stretch them along some other direction. It is this effect that corresponds to the fundamental force of gravity deep down. Why is gravity so weak? That's a good question. I don't know. No one knows for sure. I can tell you that if gravity wasn't so weak, if it was much stronger than what it is, it would be much easier to create black holes. And so probably we wouldn't be there to ask ourselves that question. Actually, a few years ago, there was a model being proposed where it is possible that there are extra dimensions out there. So if you imagine that the three dimensions of space in which we will live in, plus the one dimension of time that we experience, all of this corresponds to a three plus one dimensional world. But it could be that it could be 
other dimensions are there that we're not sensitive to us as creatures of made out of the forces that we are made out of and the matter that we are made out of. And it could be that all the forces and all the matter that we're made out of is confined on a surface or a membrane which is itself embedded in an extra dimension. Gravity itself, being related to the very structure of space and time, is allowed to probe these extra dimensions and is allowed to leak into these extra dimensions. This leakage of gravity into the extra dimension corresponds to a dilution of gravity in extra dimensions and that could explain why gravity is actually much weaker because it has been diluted along the extra dimensions. That is a possibility. Actually another possibility that I'm working on with my collaborators is to understand if there's another reason as to why gravity is so weak and it could even be weaker than what we originally anticipated on very large cosmological distance scales. This is some areas of research at the moment. Why is gravity a theory? Well, gravity itself is a phenomenon, is something we experience. It's not a theory per se. A theory is a framework that will allow us to explain our observation, to explain gravity itself. For instance, Newton's theory of universal gravitational attraction is a theory which is self-consistent with itself and with observations up to a given level, up to a given extent. We know that it comes to a point where Newton's theory of gravity is not the correct description for what's going on, but within a given regime, it is a good description. Now we know that beyond that, there, are, there is Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is an even better description for what is going on. It is a self-consistent mathematical framework, consistent with itself and consistent with observations and experiments up to a given extent. But even Einstein's theory of general relativity is not the theory of everything. There comes a point where something else is needed to explain nature, to explain the behavior of gravity. We know that. What this theory of everything is, we don't know for sure. But we know that we need to embed Einstein's theory of general relativity in something grander to unify it with the other fundamental forces of nature. There are some proposals out there, for instance, string theory. One of the challenges with string theory is that it is difficult to come up with specific predictions which can be compared with our observations and our experiments. But this is something that my collaborators and I and the whole scientific community is currently working on. And finally, why is gravity called gravity? That's an excellent question. Why is gravity called gravity? Well, Newton came up with the term gravity to explain this phenomenon and he borrowed it from the Latin gravitas, which means weight. But in reality, I think, to my mind, the real question is why is this Latin term gravitas so close to the other Latin terms gravis, which means serious? Why is gravity related to this serious phenomenon? From the point of view of the linguistic, we should probably ask an expert, but I don't think it's a coincidence because to the level we experience it, gravity is indeed the most serious phenomenon that exists. It acts on everything and everyone with the same rigid, intransigent way. And according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, this has to be the case unquestionably. But I think that deep down gravity may not need to be as serious as as what Einstein thinks. It could be that gravity could have a well-hidden sense of humor, and this is something that my collaborators and I are working on. That's it. Thank you.